Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make these cubic waves. First thing that you need to do is that you have to come to this function create canvas and put in the third argument as webgl and this is going to allow you to render things in 3D. Inside the draw function, I'm going to create a box and I'm going to use the built-in function called box and box can take in a number of arguments and it doesn't have to take in anything at all actually. So let's just play. Now you can see that we have actually a box in the middle of our canvas. So without providing any argument, the box already has a default size of 50. So let's say we were to put in 50 as the size and click run, we get the exact same thing. So Let's first put in no fill so we can see that it is actually a box and not a square. I'm also going to draw an ellipse. And this ellipse is going to be in the middle of the canvas. All right, and let's fill it black. Another thing that I want you to notice is that because we're using the WebGL mode, you can see that this box, even though we put it at 0, 0, right? It is drawn in the center of the canvas and not at the top left corner of the canvas, right? Meaning that the origin point is now at the center of the canvas. So now I'm going to use the rotate function, rotate x function, so that we can rotate around x axis. And I'm going to create a new variable called angle. And angle is going to be mapped to my mouse x location between 0 and the width. And I'm going to map it to 0 degree and 360 degrees. All right, and because I'm using degrees, I also need to set the angle mode to degrees. Oh, and I also need to put in angle as my argument inside the rotate x function. All right. You can see that the ellipse is also rotating. Now I want to also put in another rotate function, this time rotate y, and put in angle as an argument. All right, so you can really see that it is a box. Now we only put in one argument for the box, right, of 50. What if we put in the second argument for 20? So you can now see that the width, which is the first argument, is 50, but the height and the depth is 20, right? So the second argument acts as the height and the depth. And if you put in the third argument of 100, so let's not move it first. All right, so now the width is 50, the height is 20, and if we move it, the depth is 100. I'm going to put it back to 50 because I want a cube. Now let's try to draw a set of boxes, right, in a grid of two by two. In the box function, there is no place for us to put in the x and y arguments for the location of the box. But right now, without putting anything, the box is being drawn at the origin, which is at the center of the canvas. For us to draw another box, and this box I want it to be on the right side of this original box, which is going to be at the coordinate of 50, 0. What I have to do is that I need to use a translate function. And basically, I need to translate the origin point, the new origin point for the new box to be at 50, 0. And then I'm going to draw a box of the same size, 50. And I'm going to put this fill or the ellipse only. All right, and you can see that the ellipse is moved, right? It was at 0, 0. Now it's at 50, 0. And it's because this translate function translates everything from this box to the ellipse as well. And if we want to contain it just with the box itself, what we need to do is that we need to put a function called push and pop. The push and pop functions are very important in doing transformations. The push function allows us to save the transformations that we do, in this case, translate. And then we want to translate the position to 50, 0. Then we can call all the commands, and in this case, we call the box function. 
and then the pop function here basically returns all the transformation back to the original point. So if we were to put push and pop here, the translate function should not impact the ellipse here anymore. So as you might have guessed, now the origin point goes back to 0, 0, and so the ellipse is being drawn in the center of the canvas. So now if we want to draw another cube below the original box here, all we have to do is that we need to just copy and paste this line of code and then just change the arguments from 50, 0 to 0, 50. And then we have this box here. And if we want another box right here, we just need to translate it to what? 50, 50, right? And essentially, this first box is what? It is the same exact format here, right? But we translate it to what? To 0, 0, right? Which is redundant. But if we were to do this, we get the same thing. And as you can see here, we're basically calling the same set of commands four times. So what we want to do is that we want to now write a for loop, a nested for loop from i equals to zero to i less than the number of columns, right? And for let j equals to zero to j less than rows, j plus plus, right? And then we can just copy and paste these set of commands. And then, so first let's declare columns to be two and rows to be two. And then let's set the size to 50, right? And now we want to put size here. And for the arguments inside this translate function, now it's basically just i times size and j times size, right? So it goes from 0, 0 to 0, 50 to 50, 0 to 50 comma 50, right? Which is the same thing as here. So we can delete this. And if we click run, we get the exact same thing. So now we know how to draw a grid of cubes with a set of columns and rows. So now let's try to increase the number of columns and rows. What if we set it to five by five? So the next thing that we want to do is that we want to actually move everything to the left and up. And we can do that by writing another translate function. This translate function is going to translate everything. It will make more sense if we change this to 10 columns by 10 columns. And if I click run, comment this out. As you can see here, we want to see 10 by 10 set of cubes, right? But we only see how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 and a half. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 and a half. So we're missing another 5 and a half. We want to move it to the left by the number of columns divided by 2, right? Time size. So if we do that, we would get columns is 10 divided by 2 is 5. 5 times size is 250. So 250 will actually move it a little bit off to the left. And then we want to add a half here, right? Which is size divided by 2. So we want to translate it by size divided by 2 plus, no, minus, right? We want to move it to the left, size times columns divided by two. And then we basically do the same thing, but with rows for the second arguments. All right, and then let's change it back to five by five. And now everything is in the center. If we were to uncomment this rotate function, this is not what we want, right? Because it rotates the whole grid all together. So actually, the order in which you write the transformation functions, including rotate x and rotate y, really matters. Because we want to rotate each of the cube individually, we need to first put it inside the nested for loop. And we also need to put it after the translate function here, because we want it to translate first to the position that we want to draw the cube before you rotate it. And with this, you can see that each of the cubes are rotating independently of each other. Now I'm going to comment this angle and I'm going to set angle to zero. And if I click run, 
you can see that we now see the front facing side, right? This is at angle equals to zero. To get the wavy motion that you saw at the beginning of this video, what we need to do is that we need to set the starting angle to be different for each of the cubes in this grid. And we can do that quite easily by setting the starting angle at a different location. So let me just add a new variable called starting angle and we can declare this as how about 10, right? And then we click run. You can see that it is moving up a little bit, right? But we don't actually want each of the cubes to have the same starting angle. We want it to be different based on the columns and the rows that each of the cubes is in. So what if we multiply the starting angle by i, which is the columns, right? Now you can see that each of the columns have different starting angle. And how about we multiplied it by j? You can see that each of the rows have different starting angles. But the interesting thing is that we can get the wavy pattern by doing i times starting angle plus j times starting angle. And now, it's kind of hard to see right now. Let me comment this out. Let me also set the size to how about 20, and then we can do 15 by 15. Let me do one more thing. Instead of just putting size here, let's do size divided by four. So there is some of a gap in between each cube. What if we don't do no fill here and then put in maybe a color white? To get the wavy patterns that we want, the starting angles for each of the cubes that are on the same diagonal lines have the same starting angles, meaning that the cubes that have the sum of i, the index i and j, to be the same. For example, this cube here with i equals to 2, j equals to 0, i plus j is 2. This one, i equals to 1, j equals to 1, i plus j is 2, and same as this one, right? j equals to 2 and i equals to 0. They all have the same starting angle. All right, and all we have to do is we just need to increment the angle. Let's try it by one degrees at a time. Ta-da, and now you get a wavy cubic pattern. To make it pretty, what I'm gonna do is that, so let's delete these two lines of code. I'm gonna give it a transparency of 100. And then I'm gonna put in no stroke and I'm gonna put in a really dark background. Perfect. And what I kinda of like to do is I like the smaller cube size and a sizable margin like this. I want to show you that you can also change the way that the wave is moving. So instead of doing i times starting angle plus j times starting angle, what if you do minus here? All right, so now you can see that the pattern is going in the opposite diagonally direction, right? What if you just want this part? And now you get this wave that goes from right to left. If you subtract this, it goes from left to right. If you just do J, right now it goes from top to bottom. And if you add it here, it goes from bottom to top. So this is how you make cubic waves. Give it a try.